Welcome back to Screen Simplified. In today's episode, I'll be discussing a gripping crime thriller film called Revolver. Please note that there will be spoilers ahead, so proceed with caution. The story revolves around Jake Green, a cockney gambler who has recently been released from a seven-year prison sentence. Alongside his brother Billy, Jake ventures into a prominent local casino with a mission to reclaim the money owed to them by the notorious crime boss, Dorothy Macha. Despite the advice of his bodyguard Paul, Jake decides to participate in Macha's exclusive game. As they ascend to the designated floor, Jake's claustrophobia resurfaces, causing him to hesitate about taking the elevator. However, the other bodyguards convince him to overcome his fear since climbing 20 floors on foot would be arduous. Reluctantly, Jake enters the elevator, battling a panic attack. In a strategic move, Jake intentionally loses his first bet against another player at the table, creating a false sense of security for Macha. However, when Jake places the same bet with Macha, he emerges victorious. With their bags filled with cash, Billy and Jake hastily leave the casino. On their way out, they encounter Zack, who warns them of imminent danger and offers his assistance, handing Jake his card. This time, Jake opts to take the stairs, but as he descends just a single step, he collapses, coinciding with the revelation on the card, which reads take the elevator. Jake is rushed to the hospital. While Macha expresses concerns to Paul about Jake's potential desire for revenge after his long incarceration, particularly regarding an incident involving his sister-in-law. In response, Macha instructs Paul to hire the most skilled hitman to eliminate Jake. At the hospital, doctors are unable to determine the cause of Jake's blackout at first glance. They advise him to return home and rest while awaiting the results of his blood tests. After Billy retreats to his own house, Jake, accompanied by the bodyguards, seeks their protection. However, upon reaching their destination, they are immediately ambushed, resulting in the bodyguards being shot. Miraculously, Jake manages to evade the gunfire because he spots a card on the floor instructing him to pick it up. He obediently follows the directive and escapes in his car, but unfortunately, the driver is also shot. Fortunately, Zack arrives just in the nick of time to rescue Jake and whisk him away to safety. The highly skilled hitman, Sorter, is baffled by his failure to eliminate Jake, as he prides himself on never missing his targets. He speculates that someone must have tipped Jake off. However, when Macha reprimands him, Sorter attributes his missed shot to a mere bad feeling. Meanwhile, Zack takes Jake to meet his partner, Avi, who somehow managed to obtain Jake's medical records. The test results reveal a shocking revelation, Jake has a rare and fatal blood disease, which gives him only three days to live. In exchange for their protection, Zack and Avi propose two non-negotiable conditions. Jake must hand over all his money and comply with any request they make, including answering their questions. They grant Jake three hours to make his decision, but he departs without uttering a word, convinced that they are attempting to deceive him. Returning to the hospital, Jake receives the same prognosis from the test results. However, he suspects Zack and Avi of bribing the lab. To confirm the diagnosis, Jake seeks a second opinion from his private doctor, who delivers the same devastating news. Jake, desperate for assurance, resorts to threatening the doctor with his gun to ensure that he is not involved in any financial motives. Realizing he has no alternative, Jake withdraws money from the bank and returns to accept Zack and Avi's proposition. As they embark on a ride, Avi explains that they are loan sharks, and it will be Jake's own money that they will lend out. After delivering money to their first client, Avi presses Jake to reveal his history with Macha. Jake's involvement with Macha stemmed from an unfortunate situation. Macha's three dim-witted henchmen, known as the Three Eddies, lost their card player before a crucial game and coerced Jake into taking his place by threatening Billy's family. Reluctantly, Jake accepted the offer to protect his loved ones. During the game, tensions escalated as the other players insulted Jake and his mother. Unable to tolerate the disrespect, Jake initiated a gunfight. In the chaos, the power went out, the money vanished, and the next thing Jake knew, his name was implicated, and he found himself facing police interrogation. Fearing for his niece's safety, Jake refrained from exposing Macha's involvement. Tragically, his sister-in-law lost her life while attempting to shield her daughter during a confrontation with the police. As a result, Jake took the blame for the incident and served a seven-year prison sentence, keeping Macha's organized gambling operation hidden from the authorities. After conducting visits to various clients, Zack instructs Jake to seek shelter at a motel. 
Meanwhile, Macha and Paul pay a visit to Sam Gold, a revered crime kingpin known as the epitome of success in the criminal underworld. However, Gold never receives visitors personally, so Macha and Paul meet with Lily Walker, his advisor. Lily agrees to facilitate a drug deal between Macha and Gold, while emphasizing Gold's aversion to publicity and reluctance to offer second chances. In the following scenes, Jake provides Zack and Avi with additional funds, leading to a conversation about his time in jail while engaging in a game of chess with Avi. Given the option of serving 14 years under regular conditions or 7 years in solitary confinement, Jake opted for the latter. During Jake's time in prison, he was confined between two long-term inmates, a skilled chess master and a cunning conman. Although the two men never directly conversed, they possessed intimate knowledge about each other. Over the initial five years of Jake's sentence, they communicated by leaving messages within library books, ultimately sharing their formula for winning any game in the world. These men, who had been planning a prison escape, promised to include Jake in their scheme. However, when the time came for their departure, they vanished without a trace, leaving Jake behind and taking all of his money. Their departure was marked by a cryptic note stating, you can only get smarter by playing a smarter opponent. Undeterred, Jake decided to utilize the formula they had taught him to amass wealth at various casinos. Left with only the note as a bitter reminder, he embarked on a journey to make himself rich using the formula they had imparted. As days passed, Jake continued his work, visiting clients and parting with his own money. Although he was expected to intimidate and threaten non-compliant clients, Jake found it impossible to harm innocent and desperate individuals. Meanwhile, Avi and Zack engage in a daring operation, using a truck to break open a wall and steal a safe containing the promised powder Macha had intended to acquire through Lily's brokering. Macha dispatches Paul to resolve the situation at any cost. Paul seeks the assistance of their rival, Lord John, a powerful triad kingpin. Despite the urgency, Lord John agrees to provide the powder but demands an exorbitant price. Jake, Zack, Avi, and their team assemble at the designated hotel for the exchange. Ingeniously, they infiltrate the neighboring room occupied by the thugs involved in the deal. Through a strategically crafted hole in the wall, they administer sleeping gas, effectively incapacitating both Macha's and Lord John's men. In a clever and calculated move, Jake and his team successfully execute a plan to steal both the money and the powder, cunningly framing Macha and Lord John for each other's robbery. Some time later, Billy reaches out to Jake with alarming information. He reveals that Zack and Avi are notoriously dangerous individuals, feared even by figures like Gold. Billy advises Jake to leave and distance himself from the situation. However, Jake disregards the warning and continues with his work. At one point, Jake is assigned to confront a frightened client and is expected to use violence. Refusing to comply, he attempts to turn the tables by aiming the gun at Avi instead. Jake discovers the gun is empty, and before he can react, Avi strikes him, rendering him unconscious. Hours later, Jake regains consciousness in the motel and receives a call from Avi, who informs him that he has survived the predicted third day and should undergo a checkup. After a visit from his niece and Billy, who leaves him a gun for protection, Jake visits his doctor, who delivers surprising news. The doctor confirms that the initial diagnosis was incorrect, and Jake is, in fact, in good health. Determined to seek answers, Jake attempts to contact Avi, but is met with a response that he must wait. Meanwhile, Paul diligently gathers information, and Jake's name emerges as a central figure implicated in the issues faced by Macha's men. Macha issues an order for Jake to be killed. When Jake returns to the motel, he discovers Avi and Zack waiting for him, cautioning him about Macha's thugs lying in wait inside the room. Realizing the imminent danger, Jake flees, and despite the pursuit, he manages to elude his pursuers, particularly when one of the thugs accidentally shoots himself. As the remaining criminals discover the body, they mistakenly attribute the incident to Jake. Seeking answers and refuge, Jake visits Avi and Zack at their office. There, they admit to always suspecting that Jake hadn't divulged the complete truth about his previous dealings with the three Eddies. Those individuals, who had been awaiting Jake's release from prison to exact revenge for their dismissal by Macha, posed a significant threat to his life. To secure his survival, Jake made them an offer, a monthly percentage of any money he borrowed from them. Initially, only one of the Eddies agreed to Jake's deal, but as they witnessed his consistent fulfillment of his promises, they all wanted to be part of it, demanding a percentage for themselves. However, as their financial resources depleted, they turned to borrowing money from Macha, arousing his curiosity about the enigmatic money-making individual associated with the Eddies. 
After using the formula to amass wealth through gambling, Jake decided it was time to take a vacation with his brother and niece. Unfortunately, during their absence, Macha executed the Eddies for failing to repay him. Meanwhile, Macha is dining at an upscale restaurant when his henchmen inform him of Jake's escape. Sorter, recognizing John's lover disguised as a waitress, shoots her but fails to kill her. The woman manages to shoot off Macha's finger before succumbing to her injuries. Sorter is subsequently dispatched to Lord John's hideout to eliminate him and his associates. Returning to Jake, he engages in a conversation with Zack and Avi while playing golf on a rooftop. They reveal that Gold, the elusive figure, is merely a symbol of ego and the embodiment of greed. Gold's power lies in those who invest in him. Afterwards, Jake withdraws the remaining money from the bank and donates it all before sneaking into Macha's bedroom. Jake apologizes to Macha for deceiving him and acknowledges him as the superior crime lord. He reveals that he has made a charitable donation in Macha's name before departing. In an effort to confront his fears, Jake decides to take the elevator, which gets stuck on the 13th floor. Struggling with a panic attack, he engages in a transformative internal conversation where he rejects his ego and liberates himself from the confines of the game. When the elevator resumes functioning, Jake steps out onto the ground floor, where Macho is waiting for him with a gun. However, Jake, now at peace with himself, calmly walks past Macha, refusing to succumb to fear. This bewilders Macha, who is unable to comprehend someone who does not fear him. The following morning, Paul brings Macha numerous newspapers featuring headlines about his supposed philanthropy and community involvement. Macha revels in the public's perception of him as a caring casino owner, relishing in the newfound positive image. However, his joy is short-lived as Paul reveals that Jake has not only obtained the powder but has been playing them all along, orchestrating a master plan. Paul, Sorter, and the remaining henchmen pay a visit to Billy, who quickly realizes that one of his bodyguards has betrayed him and manages to hide his daughter in a cupboard to protect her. Once Billy is discovered, the men resort to brutal interrogation methods, refusing to believe his claims of ignorance regarding Jake's whereabouts and the powder. Sorter starts to feel uneasy, particularly when they force the girl out of the cupboard, causing her to cry. Rejecting his ego, Sorter decides not to harm the child and begins methodically and efficiently killing his fellow henchmen. However, he makes a fatal mistake towards the end, resulting in his own death. Meanwhile, Lily pays a visit to Macha, presenting him with a wreath sent by Gold, who is displeased with Macha's newfound notoriety in the newspapers. Lily informs Macha that his time is up and he won't be given a second chance, plunging him into a state of panic. Avi and Zack bring Jake and the powder to Macha's casino, where Avi finally defeats Jake in a game of chess. During their conversation, Avi reveals that he and Zack had been the inmates in the adjacent cells to Jake, but their existence may have been mere figments of Jake's imagination. Before Jake can fully process this revelation, the casino's bodyguards arrive to escort him to Macha, who has the girl with him. Dropping the bags of powder on the floor, Jake reassures his niece that everything will be fine, further infuriating Macha who is unable to instill fear in Jake even when pointing a gun at the child. Consumed by humiliation, Macha's eager-driven voices convince him that Jake cannot harm a dead man, leading him to place the gun against his own head and pull the trigger, taking his own life. 